It's Monday, January 9th, and this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we argue about how to maintain your computer. Let's do this. So, uh, Scott's a little sick today. Yeah, I got some snot in the nose. Yeah, even though he claims that he never gets sick ever and that his immune system is perfect. But, I'm not uh, sick, it's a cold and my immune system is... Wait, 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 is, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. You just said, I'm not sick. Co- colon, it's a cold. Yeah. Do you know what a cold is? It's a little rhinovirus guy. Uh, uh, yeah, virus. Yep. Uh, sick. I'm in the process of kicking its ass. I don't know, considering that you whined until I, I, I accompanied you to CVS last night so you could buy a humidifier for your room. You came. <laughs> you tried to buy mine from me. I didn't try to buy it from you, I tried to take it from you. <laughs> I wasn't going to pay you money for it. So anyway, I just have one funny little bit today. I discovered that I am not just rim. I am the definite article rim. As in the rim. You know, I didn't know any other rims. Uh, so Actually, there, there's a rim who works for CNN. CNN? Yeah, Rim Brahmi is one of their uh, reporters. How do they spell his name? R-Y-M, and it's a woman. Really? Yeah. And there's a, I, more and more I'm finding the word rim on the internet all over the place in things that aren't related to me. Republican youth majority? Yeah. Or uh, That brand of underwear? That brand of underwear is awesome, and I'm thinking of buying some. <laughs> Get some. I'll be They're hilarious. actually these designer uh, like men's sexy briefs. In other words, ghetto BVDs. Actually, my initials, because my real name's Brandon, but, well, my, not my real name, kind of my given name. I don't really use it. It's kind of a long story. But uh, my dad, when I was born, wanted to make my middle name Vincent, just so that my initials would be BVD. Ha ha ha. And my mom put the kibosh on that right quick. <laughs> Rightly so. But someone mentioned my name, apparently, at uh, RIT, where I used to go and run the anime club and everything. And someone in the room turns and says, wait a minute, you mean the rim? Yeah, this is a a second-hand, third-hand story. No, no, it's a primary source. Yeah, but you're still the king exaggerator, so... uh, Hey, hey, do do I have to get the primary source on the show to tell you what's up? uh, I'll still, uh, I'll go and find out what really happened. Yeah, I I find it absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I'm sure it was something, I'm not saying it was totally, uh, you know, not happening. I'm just saying you are... Exaggerating the uh, something. Someone said blah 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 rim, and some and then someone else said the rim. Huh? Uh huh. But in in less funny news, uh, Bush signed into law today a bill that I had not heard of or been in any way aware of until Slash Dot and Fart told me about it. Yeah, uh, I don't think anyone knew about it because you know what? Ninety nine percent of laws, no one knows anything about. But I mean, usually when you hear about a like a bad law, like the DMCA or something horrible, or the the CDB, CBD DPA, most these people are watching out for that stuff. Yeah, but it's always like this menacing thing far off on the horizon that either won't likely get passed, or we're gonna worry about it in years to come. This one didn't appear until it was passed, and it's the Violence Against Women and Department of Justice Reauthorization Act. That's why no one knew about it because. Um the only people looking at it were the people who are like the feminists and they want to be against violence against women, and they pushed it through. Actually, no, that's not at all what happened. No? This was a law that was just kind of cobbled together from a whole bunch of various anti-harassment, uh, anti-discrimination things, all bundled together. So you mean and it's then, an anti-First Amendment law? No, and then tacked on to another spending law that was going to get passed no matter what. Great. It had nothing to do with feminists. I don't know why you even brought them up. Well, then why did it say violence against women something? Because that was just one of the names on the law. Because part of the law is to protect uh, women who divorce, or actually women and men, it just uses women in the title of the law, who divorce an abusive spouse and want to not be harassed by them. Mm-hmm. But basically the law, and I'm not exaggerating at all here, makes it illegal to in any way annoy someone on the internet or in any way with any piece of technology without providing your full legal name. So wait, um... Uh... So yeah, if you're a troll on Slashdot and you don't say who you are, jail. Two years. So who determines when someone's annoying and when someone's not? What do you mean? It's just like any other law. It's like any harassment case. So I can just say that guy's annoying me and go after him? Yeah. Sweet. Next time someone is all like pro something I'm against, I'm going to go after them and say they're annoying. Okay, way to just exploit a stupid law to cause a bad situation. That's the easiest way to make it go away. 
Uh, probably not. See, I worry if the courts are even going to look at this case because it, it supposedly protects people. Yeah, but uh, as soon as someone sees it being abused, they're going to get rid of it, or a judge um, will um, say something. The DMCA about it. has been abused countless times, and it's still there. The Patriot Act has been abused countless times, and it's still there. Well, then you know what? Worst case, a bunch of people I don't like will go to jail. Great. And you know what? That'll immediately turn them into people I do like because they'll be on my side trying to get rid of this stupid law. So MySpace, the bastion of crappy websites for crappy little kids. God, I hate MySpace so much. Anyway, it was bought by Evil Fox recently. Yeah, by Murdoch's News Corp and all that? Yeah, yeah, whatever. And they finally started uh, doing evil. They blocked links on MySpace to places like YouTube and... Some basically, other, anything that competed with them. Yeah, anything that Fox didn't like, they basically, uh, MySpace blocked it. They either deleted the links, or they changed the text of the links, or they deleted entries. Or they or, filtered them out, or, you know, whatever. So, every all the little kitties on MySpace said, what the hell, we're just going to stop using MySpace and go use something else. And then they caved and they undid it. Yeah, for now. Luckily, I think those people realize that they have to get off of MySpace. Uh, I think so. But at least it made me happy that even in the cesspool that is MySpace, which is only about one step up above 4chan in terms of crap, actually had enough smart people to realize that something bad was going on and did everything they could to mitigate that. I think any group on the internet, period, that uh, if you try to you know do something that harms a group on the internet, they'll just come at you. You know, because it's so easy to go after someone on the internet. All you do is type a few words and you push buttons. Yeah, it's, it's also really easy, easy to ignore anyone who does that to you on the internet. But not it's not easy to ignore a thousand people who do that on the internet. Yeah, it is. You just don't read your email anymore. You get a new account. Yeah, and then but if you're like in charge of something or you have power on the internet, you'll soon lose all that power when all the people you have power over stop using your software. Uh, it depends. I mean, AOL's done a lot of terrible things with AIM over the years, and most people still use AIM. Uh, we jumped ship at just the right time. Actually, we both still use AIM, so we didn't really jump ship. I use AIM through a transport, so it doesn't really... So you're still using AIM. You, you realize that most of your friends use AIM. A grand total of about ten of us use Jabber. Yeah, but if you look at the messages I send, most of the messages I send are, to are, me, are Jabber. Specifically to me and me alone. Yeah, because I don't really use AIM that much. Or any IM that much. Yeah, see, I am is really my primary means of communication these days. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't really uh, communicate that much. Well, you don't communicate with people. That's your problem. You're always out of the loop. Yeah, well, I don't need to be in the loop. I communicate when I got something to say or when I want to know something specific. Uh, I, don't just, I, I just talk to people. I don't talk for the sake of talking. That's a waste of time. I got stuff to do. <laughs> like podcasting. <laughs> So, uh, those of you who know us may know that we're big fans of Mr. T. Mr. T, he don't be nobody's fool. And uh, Mr. T, for many of you who might not know, had a uh, cartoon show on. I think it was the early 90s. Never saw it. It's pretty terrible. And in addition to that, I don't know what this is from, and I didn't bother looking on the internet to find out, but Mr. T did a music video about uh, mothers. No, wait, wait, wait. Uh, was he singing, or was it like his band? Or because uh, as I don't far know. as I know, he's not a musician. See, it's weird because he's not singing so much as he's talking at you, and there's music in the background. Uh huh. And there's backup singers; they're singing and dancing. Mister T's just standing there, pointing his finger at you and talking, kind of like Captain Kirk. Mm hmm. Well, actually, kind of like William Shatner, who wasn't playing Kirk when he did that album. Or how about kind of like Mr. T, who uh, does that? You know, <laughs> looks at you and points and talks at you. All I got to say is, when you watch my thing of the day, after about 30 seconds of it, that's all you're going to get out of it. Don't watch the whole thing. You'll die. I pitied the fool who watched the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So remember the other day we talked about uh, Square One. Math Man. Math Man. I found uh, a nice little website with a bunch of videos from Square One, one of which is uh, Math Man. Oh, it's terrible. He has to eat every number less than 0.5. And uh, it's just like the olden days when I was a little kid where I'd say, yeah, eat that one. Yeah, eat that one. Yes. Yeah, eat that one. Eat that one. Yes. Oh, my God, you idiot. I, if you eat that one, I swear to God, I'm turning off the TV. No. God damn it. God damn it, stupid freaking Math Man. I could beat this game. Give me the joystick. Yeah. 
Only uh, it looks a lot worse than I remember it. It's it very obvious that while they are emulating a computer game, they did not use a computer to do so. Yeah, I mean, sure, the bad encoding of the internet video counts for something, but really, it, it's God worse damn. than I remember. It's bad. We should make new math, man. So, uh, today, since it's Monday, which is generally SciTech Computer Linux, uh, what's it day, we're going to talk about how to maintain your computer. A lot of people don't even know they need to maintain their computer. I mean, most people, like, they build the computer, and there's all this sweat and or blood. Or they just and buy a Dell, and yeah. then... Well, I'm talking to, you know, people who are at least a little geeky. Right. They build a computer, and you put a lot of effort into building it. And then it's done, and you turn it on, and you, you know, you either install Windows and reboot it 5,000 times, or you install Linux, and you just do a thousand things to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's done, and you leave it, and every now and then you install an application. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Nope. I mean, it sounds weird, and we're not saying that there's bit rot or anything stupid like that, but computers need maintenance just like cars. Yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, the computer shouldn't need any maintenance. I want it to have no maintenance. If it needs maintenance, it sucks. Well, uh, everything in the world needs maintenance, even like a toaster oven. you got to clean the crumbs out. No, you don't. Toaster ovens are $3. You just buy a new one. Well, yeah, but I'm just, you know, I'm saying like even a, a VCR, you know, you can, you can need to clean it. You realize most people don't know you can clean a VCR and they just used to buy new ones or they take it to a VCR repairman and get... Those are the same people who don't know that when you get spyware, you can format your hard drive and reinstall the OS and they just buy a new computer. Yeah, so Only if you've ever laughed at someone for uh, buying a new something when they could have just fixed it and you don't maintain your computer, well, we're laughing at you. Yep. Now, if you have a Mac, a lot of this doesn't apply because Macs actually really make it easy. Yeah, you uh, just... It, it won't mess up for a very long time, and there's not much you can do to mess it up. I mean, and you can, there aren't even screws on those things. You can't open them, so... And well, you, you don't need to, but PCs, you need to. Yeah. Well, you still need to maintain a Mac, because eventually, you know, you might mess it up, and you don't, you don't really want to... A lot of the things apply across the board, no matter what uh, operating system or kind of computer you have, but a Mac, you really can't you know, get to the point, well, or with Linux, you can't get to the point where your computer is just, think of it like uh, in your car, if you don't change the oil, the engine will seize, you know, that's the end of the car, but with Windows, you can get the engine to seize, but not with uh, Linux or Mac or anything. Unless you go out of your way, I, I mean, mean, if you're using Gen 2 and you change your uh, global keyword to star and then emerge update new use deep world... Well, yeah, but that's <laughs> that's just that's not uh, that's not forgetting to change the oil and having the engine. You know seized. what that is? That's replacing the oil with uh, explosive. No, that's driving a hundred miles an hour and then switching into reverse. <laughs> All right. But I guess we'll break this up into two broad categories: physical and uh, non-physical. The physical is easy. Yeah, it's it's not it's easy in some ways. The hard part is actually doing it. And yeah. Remembering to do it and knowing that you have to do it. Well, number one. If your computer gets dusty, clean it out. Now, you might think, oh, it doesn't get dusty in there. I mean, look, my desk isn't that dusty. Open it up. Yeah. If you haven't opened your computer before, in fact, if you've never opened your computer, right after you listen to this, open your, turn your computer off, unplug it, and just open it and look inside. Unless you're allergic to dust or something weird like that, uh, you might want to do it outside. Yeah, we're going to be real non-technical here. So, uh, you know if you have a TV or a stereo... And for some reason, there's always more dust on the TV than there is on anything else in the house. Mm, there's always more dust on the electronic things than the non-electronic things. That's true. There are a lot of reasons for that, but electronic things collect dust. Mm. Your computer is the most electronic thing you own. Well, unless you own a uh, uh, various cool Tesla things, which we won't talk about. Little uh, Jacob's Ladder? Yeah, or a little uh, spark transmitter. Mm. But... I mean, the inside of your computer, you have the fans on, right? And they're drawing air through your computer. They're drawing dust in, and the dust isn't coming back out. Well, you know, the, the dust might come back out, but not much. And if you have a filter on your intake fan like I do, sure, there won't be that much dust in your computer, but you still have to clean that filter off, or else eventually it'll just start sucking the dust right through it. Or even worse, it'll just block the intake, and then your computer will overheat and crash. crash. Yeah, that's, even, that's real bad, too. Because, so, I mean, I, I've seen people, like, I've seen a lot of people who, ha they bought, like, an Alienware computer or something, and it has a little uh, kind of filtery on it, and they thought, oh, I never have to clean my computer because I got a little filter. And then their computer doesn't work anymore, and I look at it, and, you know what? 
you don't have an intake fan anymore. You just have a giant, opaque, solid mass of dust. Yep. And it's real hard, depending on, like, what... it to get a replacement for that filter. You know, they don't make, you know, filters for intake fans that you can just buy in the shape that for your case specifically, especially since cases change every week, you know? So the first thing you want to do is, if you've never done it before, open your computer and take a can of compressed air. And when I say compressed air, I mean the compressed air you buy at, like, Staples. Yeah, it, kinda, it should be in the... There should be a section in Staples that has little cans of air... And, like, uh, LCD monitor wipes and all sorts of computer cleaning equipments. Use the ones you find at a computer store or an office store because they won't sell the other kinds. If you go to a hardware store, you'll have more choices as to what kind of compressed air you want. And some kinds can break your computer or cause static or get chemicals yes, all these problems. Some of those are meant for um, not cleaning. They're meant for, like, you know, filling tires or crazy stuff like that. Don't use those. You don't want that. But basically, just take the can, always hold it upright, because if you tip it over, uh, noxious things are going to come out of it, like liquid nitrogen. Oh, things that will freeze you. Yeah. And freeze your computer, which, which is so great. And basically, just oh, first do this outside, too, and spray down the entire inside of the computer. You'll see caked up dust, just spray it all out. Mm. And then take the little, there'll be a little straw bit that you can stick into the end of the can. Feel free, as long as the computer's unplugged, to poke that into various bits, like the power supply the fan around the CPU, and just get all the gunk out. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is point it straight at a fan and pull the trigger, and you can make the fan spin real fast, and all the dust comes flying out. That's great. Now, after you've done that and the computer's clean, you really have two options. Either do that every month or so, more often if you smoke, more often still if you have pets, more often still if your computer's in the basement on the floor. Mm. Or if you live in like Mexico City or, or like New my York parents City. who keeps the freaking computer like on the floor in the kitchen. That thing was so freaking dusty. Oh my <laughs> god. Man, at IBM where I work, we have uh the sinnering area, which basically are giant furnaces shooting flame into the air constantly. Awesome. And the air is real sooty. Great. And I maintain like thirty computers in there. Why don't you just put them in plastic bags or something? Man. Yeah, that'll work. Or just like pipe out the the heat from the computers to somewhere else. Uh, yeah, and where are they going to get their intake air from? Uh, th- another pipe. You know what? No, I just replace the computers when they stop working because they're so cheap and I have so many. That's good. But anyway, that's really all you have to do to make sure your hardware of your computer stays good is make sure dust doesn't get all over it. And but, keep, keep yeah, it I mean, you can either do this every month or you can put a filter on it and then you maybe have to clean the filter every month, which is usually easier. Yeah, I should go clean my filter. I keep forgetting. Now, I would recommend against buying any sort of filter you see in a store. They're overpriced. They're, they're, they don't fit well. They're generally a pain in the ass. Now, what I do, and Scott kind of says this is eh, but whatever. I use pantyhose for a lot of things. I use pantyhose for this pop filter I'm talking through right now. And buy a pair of pantyhose and make a filter out of that. Oh, see, my case came with a filter. Yeah, most cases don't. I don't know. A lot of cases now, they have little filters. Oh, yeah, a lot do, but most don't. Well, if you're buying a case, get one with a little intake filter. Uh, I'd recommend not caring about that because it's much cheaper to just buy a pair of pantyhose. And because a case that has an intake fan. filter costs so much more than one without. Well, a lot of a lot of sites, they just don't say if it has an intake filter. Like on Newegg, they just say, oh, fans, whatever. But you can see. You can look at the picture of the case, and you're like, oh, look, there's a filter there. You can't always see. Yeah. <laughs> I have never the had thing a is, the, the presence of an intake filter should not in any way influence how you buy a case. I know, it influences how I buy a case. <laughs> you're silly. No, yeah, you're silly. Your case has a glass panel in the side, and you have a freaking cold cathode tube that flashes blue light. It's awesome. You have a riced out computer. And it's better than your computer. <laughs> Rice is not cool on a computer. I think it's silly. Well, you think it's silly, but I think it looks better than your computer. So and how it's come also it looks, Okay, Scott, how come it looks good on your computer, but is dumb on your car? Eh, because, uh... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well? Because uh, a computer just, like, sits there and does nothing, right? It's not really, uh... You know, they're, they're traditionally, like, bleh. And it's not something people look at. So turning it into something people look at is like, ah. Oh. But a car is traditionally something people look at. And, you know, uh, putting lights on it doesn't make it look good. Uh... How does putting lights on the computer make it look good, then? Uh, because there's not really much else you can do. Um, that was probably the worst argument you've ever made. 
It that was, was real bad. <laughs> what else can you do to make a computer look good? It's a box. I mean, you put a no, light no, on it. Just, it just, just, lets, just nah. give it up. Just give it up. It's like a Christmas tree. What can you do to make it look good? Put a light on it. Yeah, so why not put a light on the car? Well, why is the car different? Well, but here's the thing. If your car is real crummy, a light can help it. But if... Uh, uh, wait a minute. No. <laughs> no. In fact, I submit the opposite. The better your car is, the more likely a light would look good there. If you have like a 91 broken tempo, <laughs> putting a blue light on the bottom is not going to make it look better. You know, LEDs make everything better. Including cars? Only if they're uh, yeah, already yeah. below you know the level of LEDs. Don't LED. try to argue when you're sick. Yeah. And that's my advice to you, Scott. <laughs> Whatever. How do we maintain a damn computer? So anyway, just take some pantyhose and stick them on your intake fans and leave some slack so they'll catch all the dust and then periodically replace them. All right. That's, that's the cheapest way to put a filter. Or like uh, James Coon said in our forums, set up your, fa- your uh, case with positive pressure, meaning have more intake fans than you do exhaust fans. Mm-hmm. That'll keep air from coming in anywhere other than the intakes. Mm-hmm. I go with negative pressure because it cools slightly better. You just have to clean the inside of the case a lot more often. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a trade-off. Eh. And, you know, just there's little things like keep your computer generally, like don't spill things on it, don't knock it over. Oh, yeah, keyboards, just, you can clean keyboards, and you should because the dirtiest part of the computer, but... Really, you should buy a new one like every year or two because they just get mad nasty. I used the same keyboard from sixth grade until my junior year of college. And it was freaking mad nasty. Oh, my God. It had like marker and stickers and keybinds from games I played back, but like Doom 2 days. It was a scary freaking thing. Yeah, and it finally died, and then I bought the keyboard I'm using now. Thank God. I've used four, I've used three keyboards in my entire life. Mm. On my computers. Mice these days, they used to get dirty with the balls, but unless you have a ball mouse, which no one has anymore, everyone has an optical mouse, a little light in the bottom, uh, you don't need to clean those so much. Yeah, unless your optical mouse stops working, you don't need to buy a new one. Yeah. Though, one thing I gotta say, I see a lot of people who, they have an optical mouse, so they think, oh, I don't need a mouse pad, and they just use the mouse on the desk. You don't really need a mouse pad. Uh, There's a good reason why you should have a mouse pad, even a little one. Because if you just use the mouse on the desk... Look at look at take, flip your mouse over right now. There's probably three or four little ceramic or silicone knoblies, and they make the mouse flow nicely. They're low friction surfaces. Mm-hmm. They get worn down real quick on a lot of old on a lot of wooden type desks. Well, if it depends. If your desk is all chafy, it'll get worn down. Like my desk is a shitty piece of wood that I just bought and sanded, so you know I need a little pad. But if you have like a normal, a nice desk with a nice shiny wood that you know is all fancy. No, even then, it wears down the little knoblies a lot faster than if you have a mouse pad. Nah, I don't know about that. You know, because yeah, yes. at work, at work, absolutely no one has a mouse pad, and no one's knoblies are worn down. Ah, uh, see, at my work, everyone who doesn't have a mouse pad, their knoblies are gone, uh. and the mice are just these scrapey, horrible things. Yeah, there are no mouse pads in my work pretty much at all, and everyone's just fine. Of course, uh, at the same time, actually, I saw on the internet just yesterday, you can buy little low-friction mouse stickery bits. So if yours wear down, you can just replace them for like a buck or two. Oh, yeah. Actually, they were actually advertising them as like special gamer ones, so they would be even better. Now, that's just a little silly. Well, you know, that. what do you want? See, that, that, that's just, I mean, there's a level, that's basically audiophileness for gamers. Yeah, that's exactly mouse what mouse pad, though the other benefit of a mouse pad that you really don't want to overlook is that it is a little bit of padding, which is good for your wrists. Uh, the thing is, you really don't want the mouse pad that has that giant nub on the end and you wrist, rest your wrist on that. That's you not know, really good. there are ergonomic studying people who are just going to argue about that forever and ever. Get whatever feels good. If you feel comfortable, you are comfortable. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, my only point is that if you're not using a mouse pad just because you have an optical mouse, look into getting a mouse pad. They're a couple bucks. Eh, it's all right. It's not 100% necessary. You got better things to worry about. It's a couple bucks. I think it's not something you really have to worry about worrying about. Eh, You know, whatever. So, uh, the non-hardware bits. Oh, is he going to skip monitors and all that? Oh, clean your monitor if it gets dusty. All right, now, this isn't a problem on most new CRTs, but if you have an old CRT, don't use alcohol or ammonia on it when it's on. I don't know why you'd use ammonia or alcohol in any monitor. Well, actually, I use alcohol to clean mine. Yeah. The thing is, some older CRTs, if you use something harsh, like 90% alcohol on the front of it, and it's on, 
it'll crack. Not the whole thing, just the uh, shield on the end and ruin your monitor. So if you're ever going to clean your monitor with a chemical, turn it off first. I always cleaned my CRT with uh, just Glass Plus the same way I clean a TV. Uh, you know what's in Glass Plus, Scott? Ammonia. Really? Yeah. I thought it was just water and blue. Uh, no, it's water and ammonia and then blue food coloring because it's trying to rip off Windex. Oh. Wow. I thought that Windex was trying to rip off Glass Plus. No, nah, Windex came first. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Damn. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, well. Whatever. It doesn't matter which one came first. So, like I said before Scott uh, screwed up, yeah, ammonia. All right. Ammonia is a good thing. Alcohol is a good thing. Just make sure it's off. And don't use a paper towel. It could be nice with those nice soft paper towels. Yeah, but generally... Don't get, I, the, don't get the chafey store brand ones. Well, even generally, if you're ever cleaning glass, you don't want to use paper towel. Because paper towel is basically high-grade sandpaper. So, Rim doesn't have LCDs, so he doesn't know what to do with them, but... Well, I know what to do with them, because I have them at work. I just don't have one right here in front of me. Oh, anyway. LCDs, they're not made of glass. They have, Well, there's glass on the inside somewhere, but you don't worry about that. There's, it's a piece of plastic in the front, and it scratches really freaking easily... And it's pretty much irreparable if you damage it in any way. And it's going to be real visible. Like, you're going to see this hideous mark whenever you turn your monitor on. It'll, it'll bother you. So Just follow whatever instructions came with your LCD. you got to be real careful. You're going to need to get, like, these... Um, well, you know, most LCDs come with instructions and usually a little pad. Yeah, sometimes they come with instructions. The t uh, I've never seen them come with a cleaning pad ever. Uh, the ones we got at work came with them. Uh. Most Dells come with them. Uh, Dells might, yeah. But if you go to Staples, they have these microfiber cloths. And those are pretty much, you can just use it like a, th you can get one and use it forever to just clean the dust off the monitor. And maybe once a year, once every few months, you'll get, they have this little kit that's like a wet wipey, uh, a dry wipey, and then, of course, another microfiber cloth. So what you do is you do the wet one and then a dry one, and then you wipe the dust off. And that, like, cleans off any sort of... If you get like uh, maybe like a wet sticky thing on your monitor or something like that, that's how you get it off. Just basically don't ever, like if there's grease, don't just wipe it off with your shirt ever or paper towel ever or like a washcloth. You'll yeah. kind of ruin it. They really should start making LCD screens that are more resistant. I don't know why they don't. It's kind of, I don't know. Uh, a, lot of, even, a lot of CRTs, even newer ones, are real easy to damage too. Because you might think it's glass, but usually there's a coating on top of the glass. Mm-hmm. Some sort of reflecto thing or an anti-glare thing. And, like, it's the same with uh, eyeglasses. Eyeglasses are real durable until you get anti-fog or anti-glare coatings on them. Then they're real fragile. Mm. Someone should do something about this. Yeah, there's really no way. Like, my glasses, when I got them, I had a choice. I could either get really durable or absolutely no glare at all. I chose no glare at all so I don't see a reflection of my eyeball in front of me all the time. Mm. But if I so much as, like, nick my glasses, they'll just, they're good, they're done. Well, wow. you won't just see, like, a nick of eyeball. You'll see, like, a full eyeball. I don't know. What? I don't know. What was that? <laughs> I mean, if you only scratch, like, say, the corner of it. Then, then I'll see a scratch. Well, yeah, but you won't see, like, uh, your your anti-glareness won't be... Uh, no, no, What the point is that the anti-glare is a really, really, really fragile coat, and it scratches really easily, and the scratches are very visible. So yeah. if I scratch my glasses, there's now a giant scratch in my vision forever. Yeah. If I didn't get that, then I'd have glare instead. It was it's, a trade-off. It's good not to wear glasses. All right. Is that all the hardware bits that need maintaining? Sure. Oh, uh, your wires in the back of your computer, keep them neat. Actually, you don't really need to bother, as long as you can get to all of them. Yeah, but, you know, it's like if you keep adding things or taking things away, you'll just have a mess. It's well, just... I've noticed most people don't plug much into their computer. Nowadays, anything you plug in, you plug into the front because yeah. there's a little USB there. Yeah, that's the best way to do it is you have a really new computer. A lot of people just have, like, you know, a power cable, an Ethernet cable, and a monitor cable. And everything else is USBs in the front. That's the really good way because well, it's ultra clean. Well, speaker cable, microphone cable. Well, if you have a microphone. Got to have a microphone. See, I realize at work, I don't really have so much. Like, I, I, I use, like, six USB holes and, like, only, like, two things go in the power strip. But at home, I use, like, eight holes on the power strip. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. So, maintaining the software. If you're a Mac user, other than the file uh, organizing bit, you really don't need to listen to this. Your Mac just works. Yeah. Well, there are some things you need to maintain, like... Uh, don't let, you know, you got to make sure your software is up to date all the time. 
you know, but Mac has a little auto update thing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, hence you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Well, you do have to click on it, you know, to update whenever they say you should. Windows, honestly, just let it auto update. Yeah, I mean, there might be some Windows updates that are disagreeable, but if you don't get them, you'll be sorry later anyway. Because while they're disagreeable, there's no alternative. Yep. It's not like you can say, oh, I just won't install that one ever, because mm-hmm. then you, you're you open to a vulnerability forever. And with Linux, depending on your distribution, there's some sort of update system. In Ubuntu, it just kind of says, hey, update me. But in, like, Gen 2, you have to do it manually. And I mean, just basically just keep up to date. Maybe once a month, just get all your packages, get all whatever you need to have updated using whatever automatic thing you have and do it. Yep. All right. So especially on Windows, there will be software where you don't have an automatic update system and where the software doesn't have its own automatic update system. So you, what you want to do is you want to check, you know, the website for that software every uh, month or two to see if there's a new version. I mean, if that, unless it's a some sort of web thing, you don't need to worry. Unless you need a new feature, there's really no reason to upgrade. Well, or there's a known bug. Well, it or, it's, or it's something that could give you a vulnerability. It depends on how often you use it. I mean, if it's something you never ever use, and you just have it, and you use it like once a year, and it does well, what you need it to do, don't even you know bother. Well, not even not so much how much you use it, just if you need it, I, if you need an update. I mean, I use Cool Edit 2000, and there were actually a lot of updates for it. I never updated it once in the like five years I used it because it worked perfectly. I had no reason to update it, and none of those updates fixed a vulnerability. Yeah, but their updates might add features that you might not realize you don't want them and that you want them until you have them. Eh, if I need a feature, then I go and get it. If I don't need it, I don't care. I mean, if I went, you went by that logic, you should be using like Firefox one half. You know, it has all the uh, features that you use. You don't use any of the other. No, because stuff. the early Firefoxes don't have the primary feature, which is don't crash. They didn't crash for me. The early Firefoxes really didn't like my computer. I had some issues with them. I think it's an issue with your computer, but anyway. Well, my computer's an old piece of crap. What do you want? Firefox works fine now, after the 1.0 days. It sure does. But, uh, you know, I tend to just, uh, unless there's like, you know, something removed in the newer version, like a lot of times what will happen is like you'll get um, iTunes and then the next version of iTunes will have something worse, like a DRM or something. Then you want to hold back. That always doesn't work anymore, though, you know, because most things just won't accept old versions. Yeah, like PSP and stuff, where, you know, you put in a new game and it upgrades your firmware. But anyway, th- we don't really need to talk about this. Just yeah. keep up to date. Update your That's software. That's all we have to say. Uh, oh, keep up to date, organize your files. That's yeah. really it. Well, you also want to... Uh, what? Like, if you have a uh, Windows, you got to keep your registry clean. No, you don't. That's taken care of now. If you use like XP, it, it keeps it pretty clean. No, the if only you, things that a can, lot of times, if, if programs, if the programs that you install and uninstall aren't written properly, or the inst- uninstallers aren't written properly, your registry can become full of crap real quick. See, the problem with saying that is there's no easy way to clean out the registry. No, so the, that's there, really an advanced thing. Well, the, there are there are some registry no, cleaning programs. No, every registry cleaner I've ever seen is not worth using. They're very dangerous. They usually remove keys you need. No, there is one that is actually made by Microsoft that I used yeah, back we, in the day. Wait, the one that you can get from Windows Update? No, the one that you can get from the Microsoft website on, like, a Microsoft developer website. Uh Uh-huh. I think it's a power tool or something. Honestly, Scott may disagree. I say just ignore your registry. If you don't know what your registry does, just ignore it. But you don't even have to go into the registry to use it. It's just just a thing you click on, and you say, clean my registry, and it goes, clean. Yeah. See, I say it doesn't even matter, because it really won't affect your performance. Oh, no. See, that's the actually not true, because the performance, uh, the registry, when Windows computers are going slow... If you actually like monitor or debug Windows computers to see what they're doing, they do hard drive hits to the registry like like every freaking second. Yeah, and you know what? That's really only an issue if you've been spywared. No, it really just no, normal. Uh, no, unless you've been spywared or you install and uninstall applications on it on an obscene basis, you're not going to have this problem. You will have this problem. In fact, on brand new Windows systems, just fresh installed, the registry is hit constantly. That's the way Windows works. Oh, I'm not saying it won't be hit. I'm saying you won't have a problem beyond what Windows already has unless you install or uninstall programs obscenely or you have spyware that made your registry huge. Well, the thing is the registry... registry doesn't just grow unless you install It does actually just grow. 
Watch? If, go no, get a Windows if, computer. No, if you take a Windows computer and boot it and just leave it running, the registry's not going to grow magically on its own. It won't grow magically on its own, but we're assuming you're actually using the computer. And Wait, but, all right, if you're just using it and you don't install anything, it's not going to grow much. It actually grows. Just browsing the web and, you know, doing things in your control panel, the registry gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it bigger. It doesn't get that much bigger unless you... Go look at it. it. You'd yeah. be very surprised. It's uh, you scary. Know what? Yeah, I've looked at it often because I do a lot of wine work with, with wine. In at work, yeah, wine work it with wine at work, and I, d- I look at my registry on a regular basis because the main thing I do is I get a Windows program to work in wine, but and then I have to go through look at all the register keys and everything and import them into wine and Linux, and I see my registry on a regular basis. And you know what? It's been the same size for like six months. Oh, no, in wine it's very different because in no, wine- no, in Windows when I look at it. Oh, the registry on my laptop for work is constantly crazy. What do you mean constantly crazy? Is it growing? How big is it? It's pretty scarily big, and I ran a cleaner. Because you don't realize it's like 60 or 70 megabytes is not scarily big. Yeah, I know, but that's that's about the size it usually is. This is like hundreds of megabytes. It's huge. All right, then you must have installed or uninstalled things or have a profile with a lot of weird things set. Because the registry doesn't just do that on its own. It does just do that on its own. No, it doesn't. It does. I read many things about it back in the day. All right, fine. I think you're wrong and kind of paranoid about this. No, anyway, you should still just make sure the registry doesn't get out of control. Look yeah, well, at it. That's what's got. I say ignore your registry if you don't know what it is because you're not really going to be able to do anything with it. Well, you don't have to actually go and mess with it, you know, if you don't know. You just keep an eye on it. Wait, wait, if you don't know, how can you keep an eye on it? You just look at the size of it. Okay, and you see it get bigger. What do you do if you don't know anything about it? You run the little handy-dandy cleaning program, and you see if it gets any smaller. Okay, and say it doesn't. Well, then there's probably nothing bad in it. That You know, it's it's the correct okay. size still. Because usually if there's something bad in the registry, it's spyware. Yeah, the spyware is the number one thing that gets in there. It's pretty much sure. the only thing nowadays, unless you install crap old programs. Oh, crap old pro. That's the other thing. You never if you if you can avoid it, don't use crap old programs. Look for something that's new and does things properly. And that was Geek Nights with Rem and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music. Thanks for listening. Please remember to point your favorite podcatcher at feeds.feedburner.com slash geeknights to get the latest episodes as soon as they're released. Also, please visit our website at www.frontrowcrew.com for the latest updates and forum discussion. And whether you love or hate our podcast, we won't know unless you send your feedback to us at geeknights at gmail.com.